Hey guys, Heimer2529 here, an old man and his computer. We're back in UEFN. This is a project I created that I play around with shapes and textures and materials, creating things like these cloudy um, tubes. Funny little texture there of, um, it looks like a sponge, but it's actually foam. A couple of things we've created here using a rust texture which looks quite nice. These balls on the end here on the left are really interesting in that as you move around, you'll see the balls change color. So the color of the ball is dependent on the location of the player, which is pretty interesting, pretty powerful. I'm not sure exactly where you'd use it, but it's pretty cool to play with. The ones on the right, uh, sorry, left now, uh, also change colors but they change color depending on where they are so if i move that ball which i'm not doing at the moment because i'm in run mode they'd actually change color and all this magic is done through materials a couple of nice shiny balls uh, but this is what i really wanted to talk to you about today so this is about decals or sprays where you can create your own graphics which can be applied to different objects. So on the left here it's applied to a, a blank cube and on the right it's applied to a cube that has a texture applied to it, a marble texture applied to it. But you can apply it to anything including any Fortnite assets, including houses, walls, floor, trees, whatever you want to apply the spray to. These three that you see there are two colored, they're actual individual pictures. Well, this one you'll see is all one color. And what I did was I created a material um, which could then very easily be replicated and different features added to it. So a different color, different metallic, different shine, shininess. So this is a green shiny metallic one. And the exact same one is used to create this purple flat decal. So let's jump into the UEFN editor and I'll show you how to achieve all this. So this is the PNG files that I used. I created them in Photoshop, but you can create them in anything that will create a PNG file with transparent background. So even though this looks like it's gray in the background, it's actually transparent. It's just the application I'm using to show them that shows them as gray. I'll create another directory in the project to keep things organized and call it decals where I'll put all the resources we're going to use today. The way I use to import things uh, is a drag and drop method, but it does require a little bit of messing around with Windows. So you've got to get this one smaller so you can get the Explorer window on the same place. Control and space opens up the browser here, and then that allows us to drop those. We'll move that down a little bit so we've still got some space. Grab this blue file, drag it in and drop it and it tells you imported imported done all finished so we can close that off and go back and we will see um, a texture it's been imported as a texture the little star here indicates it's not saved so it's always a good idea to save things so we want to create a material from this texture so what we do is you right click anywhere in the browser here go to material and material the first one and it creates one and then you can name that whatever you want well within limits double click it to open up and this will take us to the material editor the things that you can do in this editor is quite mind-boggling, but we're going to focus on those decals. With this box selected, we have to set material domain to deferred decal and blend mode to translucent. This will give us the features that we need to play with. Then we need a texture, so we will drag in our texture that we created. Control space to open up the browser, of course. Drag the texture into the workspace. Connect RGB to base color. We'll show exactly what shows in this window and you'll see the background is white. To change that, connect the alpha channel to the opacity. And the preview will update to show transparency. Now to apply the decal, it's simply a matter of 
going to the content browser, space, control space, and dragging the material onto an object. You can also manipulate the decal uh, using the same controls as you would to, trans to transform any um, rectangular 3D object. You can make it thinner, as I'm doing here. You can rotate it. I'm not sure why you would on this, but just to show you that you can do it. And the thickness of that square is very important because that's the bit that will show up the information. And that way you can make it thin enough to fit on walls without going through and things like that. Now I'm going to duplicate this material, right click and select duplicate so that I can create a programmable material so that we can create multiple material instances from that. Once you've renamed it, uh, double click it again to open up in the editor. Rather than take the color from the image, we want to be able to program the color. So what we do, first of all, is we right click here, select break this link, and we right click on the blank canvas up here and type in vector. What we want is a vector three. Vector three, if you select that, will give you the ability to put in three numbers or indeed a color and collect that across. It's currently black, but if you double click on this area, you can select whatever color you want it to be, which is cool. So, okay, now we need another couple of constants so that we can introduce some coolness. So look for a constant. We want another one called constant. And we want to apply these to the metallic and roughness categories. Now metallic accepts a value between zero and one where one is very, very metallic and shiny and zero is like dull plastic. Roughness also accepts a value between zero and one where zero is no roughness, so very shiny and one is high roughness, so not shiny. You can play around with these as much as you want and see what difference it makes to the uh, image in the preview. But we're gonna make it so you don't have to decide now, you can decide when you actually create a material instance. So what you have to do there is change these constants and vectors into parameters. Note, you still need the uh, texture here to feed the opacity to make sure that you the background is clear. In order to expose these constants as parameters, we right click, convert to parameter, and then you can name it. Let's name it metallic, because that's what it'll be. Similarly for the roughness constant, right click, convert to parameter, rough. And the color, you can do the same. Right click, convert to parameter, color. Let's spell it like an American. Now when you click on any of them down here in the details panel, you can adjust them. Adjust the different ones. Make sure we save everything. Uh, save and close the editor window. So what does that do? That creates a new material which you can drag on just like you did the last material and it would work with the settings that you last saved it as. But what you can do is you can create a material instance from that by right clicking on the material and selecting from the menu material instance. Rename that of course. Then double click to edit. This is a slightly different interface. It gives you a preview still on the left here, but it gives you options on the right here to select and change metallic, roughness, and of course, color. So you can easily come in here, create a new material instance, and come in here and find colors and roughness and so forth that you like, and then save it and exit and you can create as many instances as you like from that original material. And to use it, you just drag it out, 
as you would a material and put it down and you can see this is a metal one a metallic one because it reflects the sun in the sky so there's a red metallic one created sort of in seconds we'll create another one now right click material instruments rename it something similar on the green naming so important because you end up with so many assets Now we'll click it, change the roughness. We'll make this one very rough and not metallic at all. And we'll change the color to something like a bit darker, something like that. Okay, save it, of course. Close the editor and then just drag that out. And you've got one that doesn't reflect the sun because it's not reflective and it's green and you can put it anywhere as with the others remember to save everything and have fun ah one last thing the decal you've created is a separate object in your project so if you put it on a box like this and then you select the box and you move the box the box moves but the decal doesn't which may be cool if that's what you want but if you want something like we saw originally where like this it moves with the box then that's relatively simple to do here's a box you move it the decal stays behind rena rename this box just to make it easier demo white box or something like that Then select the decal and go to right click on here and attach to and then search for the box you've created. There it is. Click it and it's now attached. So if you move the box, it moves as well. If you've enjoyed this and like to see more, please subscribe. If you've learned something from it, press like so others can find it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks.